Hello guys! In this video I'll explain what project management in Automotive Spice is about. And you will learn the three most important points you need to know to set up a proper project management process. My name is Klaus Hormann and I'm a principal assessor and trainer for Automotive Spice. I've done many hundreds of assessments and trainings since we started Kugler Mac in 2004. Every day we help our clients to achieve added value using this model. In our channel we share knowledge about Automotive Spice and process improvement. Ok, let's get started. I think there is no need to mention how important project management is. Project management is the most important critical factor for project success. I remember so many project management problems in the many assessments I did. Here are some examples. They had no clear scope definition and the project effort was severely underestimated. They didn't have enough staff capacity while customer requests for new features rapidly came in. As a result, they only had 50% of the staff they needed and the customer was mad. This is a lose-lose situation. Another example, a very large project received the purchase order at the last minute. But of course, the staff capacity was not available with this short lead time. The customer forced the project too much to early delivery dates and this project became a nightmare. Now, let us have a look at the three most important points of the project management process. Point number one is define the project scope clearly. The project scope describes what the project is about and what it shall accomplish. If you don't have a clear project scope, you're just in quicksand. You don't have a basis to estimate your effort and then you have no justification for your personnel capacity. I've seen a lot of projects like this. They have far too much work for too few people. The result is more firefighting than professional work, constant hurry, poor quality and frustration of staff. And here's your solution for how to define a realistic project scope. Your inputs are the customer requirements and the feature rollout plan. Don't forget to check these documents for technical feasibility, realistic timing and the question of whether you can cope with the stuff built up quickly enough. Another input are the development processes of your company that will tell you what internal work you need. A great source are also similar projects of the past. Now, in the first step, you develop the project scope statement. This is a high-level definition of the product to be developed, as well as the deliverables at the respective milestones. In the second step, you develop the work breakdown structure, abbreviated WBS. The WBS describes everything that is delivered to the customer and all necessary internal project work. And this is point number two. Plan and monitor the work carefully. If you don't follow simple rules in a disciplined manner, you can invest a lot of energy in planning and monitoring and still not be effective. In the worst case, you can even lose control of your project. So, these are the simple rules I recommend. Do not plan in detail for distant periods of time. Rather, use rolling wave planning to plan the next development cycle in detail, while distant cycles are superficially planned. And also regarding planning granularity. Do not try to plan tasks with a duration of less than one day at the lowest planning level. Try to have an average duration of about one week. Now, let's talk about monitoring. 
Workflow management tools allow you to easily track work progress and hours spent compared to planned hours. This is a very helpful tool in identifying tasks that go wrong. Also, technical meetings usually take place on a weekly basis. Use these meetings to discuss progress, issues, forecasts, and outlooks. Point number three is manage your stakeholders carefully. I have seen projects that have failed simply because they forgot to involve the right stakeholders. A project lives and dies with the people involved. There are many studies that show that projects with poor stakeholder management are much more likely to fail. Professional stakeholder management basically works in four steps. First one, identifying potential stakeholders. For this, you can perform brainstorming in your team or you conduct interviews with other stakeholders to identify additional stakeholders. The second is analyze the stakeholders. A very powerful method is the power interest grid, which offers you a very effective classification of the stakeholders into four categories. Next one, plan how to engage stakeholders. You can use a stakeholder engagement grid to plan how to bring a stakeholder from a current engagement level to a desired level. Next one, manage and control stakeholder engagement. You communicate and work with stakeholders to bring their engagement to the desired level. Well, that was a lot of information in a short time. If you need more information about this process, you can download a project management white paper from our website. It's free. You can find the link in the description below. And don't forget to share this video with your colleagues. Finally, thanks for watching and check out our other Automotive Spice videos. See you and bye-bye.